No, you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. Alyssa Milano, who has been for quite some time now a leader of the Me Too movement. I don't know if she's actually involved in the organization itself in the sense that she actually helps organize things, but I know that she's been a donor to some of those causes. She's been an outspoken advocate for the movement. Alyssa Milano, just the other day, was on this interview and she was asked about, because something happened and, and everything kind of blew up on Twitter, uh, that there seemed to be an inconsistency with the way that she went after people like Brett Kavanaugh and Roy Moore and other conservatives under the banner of Me Too and didn't do the same for Joe Biden, who now has been accused of sexual assault and she has now endorsed as president. And she gives an answer, and I, I do want you to keep an open mind with this, think through it, and we're going to give you, of course, my commentary on this as well, but this was her response to that question about all of the people on Twitter giving her grief about having a double standard when it came to Joe Biden, whom she has endorsed as president and she is friends with. I, I have not publicly said anything about this. Um, if you remember, it kind of took me a long time to publicly say anything about, about Harvey as well, okay. because I believe that um, even though we should believe women, and that is an important thing, and what that statement really means is like you know for so long the the go-to has been not to believe them so yeah. really we have to sort of societally ch change that mindset to believing women but that does not mean at the expense of not um you know giving men their due process and, and <laughs> investigating like situations i like um, that and and giving you know it, it, it's got to be it's got to be it's got to be fair in in both directions so yep. we have to find this balance in the believe women um movement and also giving men their their due process and um you know realizing that we we're destroying lives um if we publicly uh don't go through the right steps in order to find out if if um a, an accusation is, is credible or not. Okay, so what's so great about that is uh, she she comes up with this answer, which, by the way, taken on its head and taken in a vacuum, like if you took out that Alyssa Milana said that and just put a script and and wrote it down and I read it, didn't know who it was, didn't understand the context, I don't think there's a single word that she said that I would disagree with, with the exception of, I take a little bit of issue with, well, the default has been to not believe women. I got to say, personally, in my experience, I've not met a whole bunch of people that would dismiss a woman claiming that she's been sexually assaulted by somebody. I mean, maybe out in California, that's how they roll, but just here in the South, I mean, one woman claims that there's somebody that has sexually assaulted her and you get people that are pretty much ready to, to put together a mob to go out and, and talk to the guy. So I, I, that hasn't been my experience, but ignoring that little tidbit of information or disinformation, whatever it may be, what I find more astounding about that is that she says, well, the thing is we do need there are good things in the Me Too movement, and I do think that we need to believe women, but we also want to balance that with due process. And I'm like, wow, due process, man. That is a fantastic point, Alyssa Milano. And I, I genuinely wish that before all these sexual assault allegations and rape allegations and, and allegations against men in, in the public sphere came out, that there had been, like, I don't know, maybe somebody that had come up with that earlier. That would have been really great, because if we had had that idea beforehand, then maybe, maybe we would have had a little bit more even, uh, we, we would have had a little bit more fairness for the people that were accused. Except when all that was going on between people like Roy Moore, Brett Kavanaugh, and including people that I didn't necessarily like, people like Al Franken and Harvey Weinstein. Um, I came up with that, and and I brought it up during when all those things were going on. 
and it, it wasn't just me, it was a whole bunch of people on the right, and also some on the left. And then even before those people came up with that talking point, there was the idea of due process that was enshrined in our Constitution. So the idea that somebody came up with that beforehand, okay, you know, just about 230 years before Alyssa Milano did, so... I guess it's fair to say she's a little late to the party on that one, but I'm just so excited I'm knocking my microphone around like it's the first day in the studio. I just love that, and I also love how her example to basically prove that she's consistent, like, oh, no, this is not the first time I've done this. This is not the first time I've wanted to give a man a fair shake when it comes to accusations of me, too. You'll remember that I held off on talking about Harvey Weinstein <laughs> Yes, Harvey Weinstein, who was also a Hollywood insider, a bigwig in your industry. So you would have had ample motivation to stay quiet about him regardless of how he felt or how you felt about him or how he was politically. But on top of that, he's also a big Democrat donor. So her big example of how, no, 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 this, this isn't because I just like the guy or I'm endorsing him or want to vote for him. Remember, I did the same thing with Harvey Weinstein, who was one of Hillary Clinton's biggest donors. If you want to show your consistency, you're going to have to do a little bit better than, but I held off on Harvey Weinstein. Uh, basically, what I got out of that statement was, believe all women until they accuse men that you like. If you like the guy, you agree with the guy's politics, then you don't necessarily have to believe the woman. Because you'll remember, she was on the front lines when it came to Kavanaugh. She did this to a degree with Roy Moore, but with Kavanaugh, she was actually in Washington. She actually showed up to the confirmation hearings. She was the guest and, and was in the room when this was happening, was cheering it on, was basically the one calling off with his head, wanting him to, to go ahead and be dismissed immediately because these allegations were here without a shred of proof. And to compare these two, this is the, the really funny thing, because here's the thing. I don't know whether or not Joe Biden actually sexually assaulted anyone. Based on the little bit of evidence that I've seen, and I haven't seen very much, it doesn't seem as though she has a very strong case but one big difference in the woman that is accusing Joe Biden and the women that accused, for example, Brett Kavanaugh or Judge Roy Moore is that we can actually prove that his accuser did know Joe Biden, which seems to be a pretty big step in thinking that the allegations might be credible. When it came to the three, well, the three main ones, but there were actually about a dozen other women that accused Brett Kavanaugh we couldn't even prove that they ever met the man. And when it came to the accusations with Roy Moore, there were a couple of women that he even admitted that he knew them and he had met them at one point, but the only one that had accused him of doing something that was actually a crime, they couldn't prove that they ever met him or had ever run into him or, or been an acquaintance of him. None of the ones that accused him of an actual crime, the ones that would have been under the legal age for him to have, you know, done anything with them, and, and the ones that didn't, didn't even claim that he had done anything with them, uh, which is also very telling. But when it came to those cases, you couldn't even prove that the accusers ever met the person they were accusing. So automatically... Joe Biden's accusers have at least a little more credibility than that, where there's not even a shred of evidence. And somehow, all of a sudden, when the accuser is accusing a man that she likes, a person that she politically agrees with and also has a friendship with, now all of a sudden due process is really super important to Alyssa Milano. It's just so abundantly transparent. And I, I love that little tagline at the end. She's like, we have to understand that if we just believe the women without giving the man a fair hearing, without giving him due process, what we are doing there is we are ruining lives. Well, you sure as heck didn't mind ruining Brett Kavanaugh's life. You weren't real concerned with that. You weren't coming out on national public radio and saying, 
you know, I think that we have to consider here that Brett Kavanaugh and Roy Moore, they're people too, and, and maybe we should not just excoriate them or try to drag their name through the mud, realizing that these are, you know, lives that we're ruining and we don't have any evidence to back it up. I don't remember her taking this measured response where she was so concerned with fairness when it came to those two. Here's the next clip where she's uh, a different point in this interview uh, talking about this as well. Right. I did my work and I and I spoke to Time's Up and I just don't feel comfortable throwing away a decent man that I've known for 15 years. Yep. Um, in this in this time of complete chaos without there being um, a thorough investigation. Yeah. I'm sure that um, mainstream media would be jumping all over this um, as well if, if you know, if they we weren't in a pandemic. Uh, oh, or yeah, if, there more, if there was more, if there was more credible, if there was evidence you know, that if, was... If they found more evidence or, or <laughs> through it. their investigation. So I'm just kind of staying quiet about it. Right, because the media has no motivation whatsoever to handle the Roy Moore and the Kavanaugh cases differently than Joe Biden. They, they couldn't possibly have a motivation for treating those guys one way and Joe Biden another way, since he seems to be the only hope left to defeat Trump when it comes to the Democrat Party. There, there's no reason that the media would be lobbing him softball questions. Uh, I was watching something that I believe it was Newsbusters, and it was uh, that organization, which is sort of a conservative watchdog group. They looked over three or four days worth since the news had broke that there were allegations against Joe Biden. And Joe Biden had done, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong, he had done 18 different media interviews in the days after that taking place. And what was really hysterical about that is one of those public appearances was a two hour long CNN town hall where somehow that just didn't come up. Yeah, the media isn't protecting Joe Biden. Even if the media were actually impartial. Let, let's just pretend for a second we lived in an ideal world where journalists actually did their job and didn't have any bias. Now, I don't know that that, I don't think that's even possible as human beings because we all inherently have some kind of bias, and I understand that, but let, let's just pretend that that was not the case, that every journalist on earth and every news outlet on earth had absolutely no bias one way or the other, left or right. Them not covering it would still not be a good reason for not believing it. This is one of the things that's so infuriating, especially when, with people on the left, is that they assume that because the media and their buddies on the left in the media say something, then it's gospel. And if they don't say it, it must be because there's just not a story there. This is how you get to a this is how you get to a country that is this radically divided. That one side watches their preferred cable news network and the other side watches their preferred cable news network never gets any feedback from anybody from the other side. And when they say something, they just assume that it's not true because they didn't see it, so it must not exist. That's what Alyssa Milano is. She is a caricature almost of a person that lives inside an ivory tower. And if the people that she's talking to didn't say it, that must not be true. There's a great anecdotal story uh, about some kind of New York bigwig uh, that was talking uh, to one of his friends after Ronald Reagan got elected. And he said, Ronald Reagan won the election. He says, that's not possible. I don't know anybody that voted for Ronald Reagan. That's the ivory tower these people live in. They assume that because the mainstream media is not covering it, it just, there must not be nothing. There must not be anything to it. I think that Alyssa Milano's standard is fair. I think that's actually what we should do with every person that is being accused of something like that. I think that you believe the woman in the sense that you don't necessarily believe everything she says is true, but you take her seriously 
and you look into it yourself, and you wait and see what the evidence says, and you follow the evidence where air it leads and give people their due process and realize that you don't want to ruin a person's life, especially on something that may or may not be true until you know for sure that it is. I think that's a fair standard. My question is, where the heck was this Melissa, Melissa Alano when it came to Brett Kavanaugh when she was a screaming banshee, literally, inside the hearings, saying that we have to cast this man out? Look, I get that she disagrees with a lot of things that Brett Kavanaugh may or may not agree with. I've said for a long time, I'm not convinced that he's actually super pro-life or anything like that. Let's just assume that he was. And Alyssa Milano didn't want him on the court because she was afraid that he was going to overturn Roe v. Wade. I haven't really seen any evidence of that. I hope that he does, but I haven't seen any evidence of it. If that were the case, and that were her rationale, and that's why she said, and this is why we can't let this man sit on the Supreme Court, I disagree with her, but at least she's being honest. I disagree with her, but at least she's not trying to ruin the man personally She's just saying, I have a difference of political opinion with him, and that's why I don't like him. That's not what happened. She called him a rapist for a accusation with less evidence than Joe Biden and said that he should be kicked off the court for that, not because she had a political disagreement with the man. That's the double standard that I can't stand. That's the double standard that is on big, glaring display here. And so when she calls for due process... I will join Alyssa Milano on those calls. But I have a feeling the next time a prominent conservative winds up getting accused that it's going to be exactly the same thing that Alyssa Milano did with Brett Kavanaugh because her standard is, do I like the guy? Yes, okay, then the allegations probably aren't true. And unfortunately, that's where a lot of people in the political sphere and also in the entertainment sphere, that's where they are. There is a glaring double standard here, and the reason that she is the subject of our Daily Dose of Stupid today is because she has a massive, obvious double standard, and she's too dumb to even realize it. My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid, but seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.